Hello, it's Hannah here with another video, and I'm going to do a video on, like, a story time that I'm reading off, and it's 11 terrifying stories that will keep you awake at night. And I hope you guys enjoy this video, and if you do, please like, please subscribe, and do all that should be old people like. If you know anyone who likes these kind of videos, share this video. So, and, yeah. I was about to say something that you guys already know, but so here is one out of the eleven. When I was seven, when I was seven, I woke up in the middle of the night with a earache. I decided to tell my mom and stepdad and walked out of my room. Some someone was sitting on the chair in the living room, about three feet away from my door room bedroom door. The person looked str strange. The face looked kind of disordered, but it, but it was dark and I couldn't see well. Mom, I asked. The person shook their head and started getting scared. Now I was starting to get scared. Mike? The person shook their head again. I decided, decided the best best of course of option I was, was going to going back uh, go, I was way off. Uh, uh, best course of option was to go back to bed so I wouldn't have to walk past this person I climbed in bed and closed my eyes eyes for a for a second before opening the, um, them and seeing the person standing on the doorway smiling madly and nodding fiercely. Ooh. The second one. A few moments later, like second story out of the 11. Uh, a few months ago I downloaded a program from my phone sleep as sleep as android i bought the pre premium vision of the app for the extra future futures to record sound throughout the night when volumes reached a certain throat it would active when I was I would snore or move around I would usually spend the next evening going over some of the re record sounds everything was pretty normal until I listened to something out of the norm it was near a beginning of April and I had an apartment to myself I'll let you listen to the sound before going on before I go explain it it started picking up snoring snow st snaps snoring and then the hair of my neck stood up as I hear my doorknob moving following this you can hear my door opening open slowly I was confused a little worried everything was still locked nobody nobody came home the chain lock was still latched on the front door and the landlord certainly didn't come I didn't use the app any more and um sorry by the way if I kind of went a little quieter because I had like um I have someone working on the garage so I'm like ah. but I was on vacation this is now number three out of the eleven I was I was on vacation in whatever that is I T H A C A that's the place with my boyfriend at the time 
we all we had already we literally what we had literally I'm take talking ten minutes and gotten into town and stopped the at a bridge near Coral's campus. I'm terif terrified of heights and so my boyfriend was oxing me step by step over the bridge. It was it was gorgeous and we stopped at the middle to take a picture. On the side we had had come from the parking lot with steps leading to the bottom of the garage, garage. but on the far side we were hiking paths with no, no bearer. A woman walked past us and offered to take us take pictures for us. We declined and she smiled and walked quickly to to the far side of the bridge where she smoothly jumped off into the gorge garage gorge whatever that word is there was not a second of hesitation it was almost she expected the path to keep going keep going yeah the the sound of the person's hitting the ground from the jump like the sticks with you oh. and then this is now the four out of the eleven my parents brought their first bought their first house back in 1972 it was a fixer upper but they did decided to move right in away right away and fix things up as time slash money permitted within a few days moving in the new neighbors came over to introduce themselves they also let my parents know that the previous owners had moved out of their the, the na a nasty divorce they had lost their second baby from SIDS and their relationship went downhill from there. My parents was horrified more, more so because they they're newly pregnant and couldn't imagine going through such thing. They eventually pretty much forgotten all all about it. Life went on. They were in love with their new life, their new house, and pre-production for the baby, they decided to wall wallpaper the wall, wallpaper the nursery. Now my dad told my mom there was no need in wallpapering the the closet, but she insisted. She was kneeling down, scra scraping off. The old painting inside of the closet when she, her eyes fell something that made her eye, made her blood turn into ice. Okay. Now we are at five out of five. Story out of the eleven. I'm a jur journalist and was told was du told this doozy by a woman I interviewed for a true crime story. When this woman was a young girl, th say eight years old, she started to come downstairs at night to tell her tell her father that there was a man in her closet. He tells her there's no such thing as a boogeyman and sends her back to her room. This hap this happens on and off for a week. Finally he gets frustrated and walks in her back walk he gets frustrated 
and walks her back to her room and said, I'll show you there's nothing in your closet. And he goes and he goes goes and opens the door. It opens inch and there he feels someone slam it shut. Turns out there's really a man in her closet. This guy was a perf who came who would come in the house every night and stare at the girl from the closet while she sleep slept. The dad kicked the the dad kicked the beep out of him and the perv went to prison for many years. I reach I researched her story twenty years after this happened. The guy had just gotten out of the jail again and no one could find him. That's pretty scary. Um, now this is the next story, the sixth one. I was about 15 minutes from finishing the night shift at work when there w was a massive crash on one of the windows in the office. So I get up and go che check it out. Someone has thrown quite a s something rock through the one of the windows on the front of the building. This is made especially weird because I'm working on a working in the institutional district at 11:30 at night with none of the other business open. I got back to my desk, put a quick call through the security to let them know and decide to head home. Head home as I'm leaving the building, I'm freaking myself out about about it more and more and end up running into my car, running to my car, getting in and taking off. I'm almost home and I've been starting to calm down a bit when I realized that I didn't unlock my car when I got in. It had been locked the whole entire time. I do a quick check with my hand in the back seat for any possible murder murders that may hang around here, but there was nothing. Fast forward thirty minutes, I've called a friend of mine who says he has checked ha, he is checked drinking, so I decided to join him. I jumped on my bicycle and started riding over. I'm doodling along the road on my bike. It's a nice night and I'm not in no big rush. Just enjoying the moonlight when I heard someone riding behind me. I straighten up and stick one of one side on the road. He passes me really slow slowly and when he was right beside me. He sh he shoots me a smile and descri can describe a purely beeping insane. I ki kind of flashed and am taken back his uh, as rides on. That realize that that's when I realized he's riding my mom's bike. Needles, needing, needless to say, I sprint the beep home. I, when I get there, for sure enough, her bike was missing and one of it, my car's doors is open. The back left one, I was driving and had no one needed to open that door. Whew. Okay. Now I'm on the next one, 7 out of 11. After this I got like 3 more. To really get my story, you have to have to understand the third floor landing. There, There's 
a single set of stairs that led up to it. Once you once on leading its T shape with the an office the left of my room to the right and straight ahead is the bathroom with a shower. Anyways, one of one night, ten PM I'm taking a shower before I head to sleep. The glass panels on my shower is like this. Caved in wait, not caved in, um concave convex glass that blurs everything. So everything is blurred and unclear. I glance at the door and that does not make any sense. I must have skipped a screenshot, so I'm going to skip number seven. So, because it won't make any sense, it doesn't make any sense to me, so I must have accidentally didn't screenshot one. So, number eight out of eleven. This happened to me when I was about eight year, about eight, and still scared, uh, and still scales scares me to this day. One evening I went to let my dogs in front of the, in front of the back garden. I at around 9 p.m. around 9 p.m. 9 p.m. It was pitch black so I quickly opened the door and my dogs came pounding in. As soon as they came, I locked the doors, door, and at this per at this moment, a person on th the other side pulled the handle door, trying to get into my house. We had a glass door. Even in the dark, I could see the outline of the man standing there. I ran to my dad, and he ran into the back garden. After this man saw saw him rushing down the road. Since then, I have closed and locked doors at the speed of light. Number nine. I lived on 13 acres. Most was of it was forest. I was a hardly ever home alone, but when I was this Excuse me. I was this kind of thing would ha happen all of the time. Only when I was on when I was alone. The the door doors would would open while they were locked. My young dogs would run up the stairs like st were, uh, my young dogs would run up to the door and stay 10 feet away barking at something I couldn't see while I hid behind the bar clutching a knife. At the same home, my younger sister and I would play in the woods and with our dogs. At 5 and 7 years old, we had and mandarinary friends that we both talk to and could hear what they're saying. Our dogs would follow. It would. It it would. Wait. It when it would walk away and run around in circles when it moved around. I re revisited that house eight years later and saw a figure moving along the edge of the woods. It looked looked like the same size as our friend. When I told my sister, she told me she saw it too, but no one else did. I didn't realize until I was older there was no way we 
could have. Oh, where is it? She saw it too, and no one else did. I realized until I was older that there was no way we both should have been able to hear it, or that the dogs would have been able to see it. Whew. Now, 10 out of 11. When I was 16 years old, I was sitting at the at a table with my mom talking about life, musing, the uh, afterlife, and breathes, some big word, the usual, the usual. I began, began to laugh and say, you know, I'm pretty sure I remember the past life. This would be... This was about the same time her face went pale. I asked her why. That's when she began to list off all the details of my silly past life, which I was felt, I always felt, was just a recurring dream I must have. She told me how I was the youngest child in the family of poor travelers. How how my crib was on top the drawer of my of any dresser where we dresser where we could sleep and my mother was a tall bony angry looking woman with her hair pulled high always wearing a long dress all details I was about to tell her for what I thought was the first time. How did you know all that? I've t never told you that. Because that, I said, because that isn't the first time you've told me. She said, you've told me the story many times. You were a baby after you learned to talk. I don't believe it. And that the worst thing she said the with the dark row brow she said was I was when I would come to play with you and you would tell me your other mother was behind me. Whew. Now this is the last story. About five years ago, I lived down in a major city of the U.S. I've always been a night person, so I would often find myself bored after my roommate, my roommate who was not a night, definitely not a night night person, went to sleep. To pass time, I used to go for long walks to spend time of thinking. I spent four years like that, walking along at night, and never once had a reason to be afraid. I always used to joke around with my roommates, not even the drug dealers in the city were polite. But all, but all that changed in just a few minutes of one night. It was Wednesday somewhere between 1 and 2 in the morning. And I was walking near a police patrol park. Quite, quite a ways from my apartment. It was a Quiet night, quiet night evening for a weeknight with very little traffic and almost no one. No one. Where is it? No one on foot. The park was as it was most nights, completely empty. I turned down a short side street in order to loop my to my apartment when I first noticed him. At 
the far end of the street, one of my side was a slight, I don't know that word, of a man dancing. It was a strange dance, similar like Walt's, like Walt Disney, um, but he, he finished each box with an odd forward strayed. I guess it could could say he was dan dance walking ahead straight of me. Dealing, deciding he was supposed probably drunk. I step step a close at uh, what? Stepped as close as I could to the road to give him a major of the past walk past me. The closer he got, the more I realized he was gracefully was moving. He was very tall and lanky and wearing an old suit. He was dancing clo close to closer still until I could take out of his face. His eyes were open wide and wild head tilted back slightly looking forward of the sky at the sky his mouth was foamed in a painful wide carton of a smile between his eyes and the smile i decided to cross the street before he dances any closer i took my eyes off him and crossed the empty street as I reached the other side, I glanced back and then stepped dead in my tracks. He stopped dancing, was standing on one foot and in the street, perfectly parallel to me. He was facing me, but I was looking skywards, smiling still wide on his lips. I was completely amped. Completely and utterly unnerved by this, I started walking again. But he kept his kept his eyes on the man and didn't move. Once I had, let's see how many. Damn, it's a little part. Pretty long. Once I had to put my put. About a half a block between us, I turned away from him from a moment to watch the sidewalk in front of me. The street, the street and sidewalk ahead of me were completely empty. Still unnerved, I looked back to where he had been, standing to find him gone. For the briefest of the moments I felt relieved until I noticed him. He had crossed the street and now slightly crutched down. I couldn't couldn't tell tell for sure due to the distance and he and the shadows but I could certainly certain he was facing me. I had look away from from him for no more than ten seconds, so it would clear that he had moved fast. I was so shocked that I stood there for some time, staring staring at him, and he was starting moving forward me again. He took giant aggressive tiptoe steps as if he were a cartoon character sneaking up on someone except he was moving very very quickly I'd like to stay at this point and I ran or pulled out my pepper spray or cell phone or anything at all but I didn't I stood there completely frozen while smiling at this creeped, creepy man towards me.